hope you're doing pretty good. Today we're doing a beading project. We're going to produce this. Well, in shape it'll look like this, but the design's going to be really different. The design's going to look more like that right there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about all the tools and materials you need to get this thing done. And then we're going to move on to the design. And then we'll move on into construction. I'm going to break it down and show the actual stitches, some of them. Uh, we'll wrap it all up, maybe throw in a little bit of a philosophical discussion. Who knows? Never know when wisdom's going to strike. <laughs> I know when it is he strikes, <laughs> most of the time. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's talk about the tools and materials you're going to need to get this thing going. Okay, so here's a pretty much a list of all the materials that you're going to need to get this project done. You want to get colors that are pretty much an even level of brightness, that's for sure. Uh, this is a color palette of eight, and I've got two black sets of black beads here. For the work that I do, I tend to go through black way more than any other bead. Uh, I've got some white. Uh, what's interesting about the white, it's not a regular finish, it's a matte finish. It doesn't reflect, have a shiny surface at all. All the rest are glo you know, glossy, but not super lustrous or anything. I've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. The purple's kind of bluish. And that's how it is with these Miyuki beads. They just really don't have a purple that's closer to red. Um, but that's okay. We're never going to put the purple next to the red anyway. So it's not going to be so obvious. The string... Well, I'm actually using fishing line, <laughs> but I'm using a real heavy fishing line because these are size 6 beads, so I want to use a bigger string to go with it, and this is 50 pound test. It's like freaking cable. I'd never use it for most of my regular work, but uh, for this stuff, it works great, and that's what I used on this project right here, was this stuff, and it, it all worked good. Uh, finally, as far as materials, there's these rings right here. And that's a black ring, similar to big black ring. Uh, I also got these little pewter ones. I really stay away from the mirror stuff. You could do that. Now, these are the materials I'm using. You do whatever you want. Uh, when it comes to tools, gee, scissors and uh, needles. Now, I'm using these big, fat tapestry needles that don't have a sharp point for this project. But obviously, you need something quite a bit smaller for smaller beads, etc. This little triangle is really good. The ladies at the bead store, bead bullies, love them to death. If you're in Oregon, stop by there. They're over in Beaverton, or Tigard. These triangles, they're great for pushing beads around and putting them back into tubes and picking them up. And, you know, I'm, I'm always, beads are flying all over the place when I'm doing this stuff, so it can be bad. Triangle's a nice little tool to have. And this other one is like a junk bowl. Uh, you just go to Goodwill, get you a white bowl. I don't even know if it has to be white, but that's what I pick. And I'll throw my needles in there when I'm not using them, or, you know, these guys, I'll throw them in there so I don't lose them, because I lose stuff so easy. <laughs> Finally, the tool you don't, it's not obvious as a tool, is this mat right here. It's just uh, like a piece of felt or something like that, but when a bead hits it, it bounces a little bit, and that's it. So... Normally, if you drop a bead like on a flat table surface or something, it just tick, 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 and off it's gone. This one, the, the bead will hit, and it'll just sit there. So that's nice. So that's actually a really helpful tool. It's not obviously a tool, but it is. Okay, so this is the pattern I'm going to be executing, more or less, for the big central piece, the uh, tubular portion. For this area right in here, I'll be doing this piece. And when it comes to the fringes and stuff, we're just going to wing it because I don't know what this is actually going to look like. And I think how this finally looks, the tubular portion should inform how the fringes look, how long they should be, and everything else like that. It's totally a judgment call. And I don't think there's any uh, right answer. There are a ton of wrong ones for me. And uh, I try and get in the right portion. Anyway, um, this paper that I'm using is called a hex paper, and the stitch we'll be doing, the uh, tubular peyote stitch, is an up and down kind of stitch like this. The beads are not le like you would normally see a square pattern. 
this is not. It's a. It's actually a hex pattern or a triangular pattern. Um, one bead has six neighbors, not eight. Okay, so if it was a square pattern, one bead would have eight neighbors. And uh, in this one, they don't. And if you notice the way peyote works, they bounce up and down this way. So you, you want to be careful with the hex paper that you get or how you design your pattern. You can see here they don't bounce up and down quite right. And uh, the other thing is that these guys are straight across from each other on a row. That's not how it works in tubular peyote. It works this way where you wiggle up and down and there's no straight line across. The straight lines are actually vertical and you can see a little bit of a straight line here. So the design, I picked some colors that look kind of like what the colors are, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. But the purple looks really goofy. It doesn't look anything like the bead. Uh, that'll be important later on. Like I said, this is just a design to help us kind of figure things out. Now, I'm kind of doing the same thing I did here. You know, just this rainbow look going from red all the way up to purple. Your basic visible spectrum kind of look. And then we've also got, we'll have purple on the top and red on the bottom. We'll see how that looks. I might change it. I might do something a little different. Maybe, you know, fill in these guys. So even when I start with a pattern like this, it's all still really open to debate. <laughs> Uh, one thing we're doing that I wanted to talk about on this pattern is you'll notice that there are four of everything. So if you count, there's one, two, three, four. And the way we've designed this up, it's a repeating pattern without any seams. Um, it just flows right one into the other. There's no obvious vertical line where the pattern doesn't match up. Now to do that, we've had to get a little bit, we had to get a little bit mathy here and do some counting and stuff like that. Um, each row, if you count like uh, this guy, one, two, three, four, like that, there's 12. Now, typically though, when you want to count how many vertical lines are there, you need two rows to hit every single line, okay, and there's 24 of those. The main thing, this repeating pattern though, if you can see, there's four of them. So if there's 24 beads, the main pattern re repeats six times, and, and you can do that by counting. You see this vertical line right here? Let's count from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're to the next vertical line. So that's how it looks on paper. I can guarantee you, I don't care what it looks like on paper, it's going to look totally different on the beads. Very first thing I need to do is I need to pick out some beads that are not going to be anywhere near the start of my pattern. So I'm going to pick out some yellow beads here. And I need 24 of them. Now, we've got all the beads on the string. There it is. What you're going to do is, the, the end that's coming out with the needle, you're going to go back through the last two beads there. Pretty straightforward. So, that's what I call my starter beads. These are going to come back off the project, but I'm using them early on so I don't get lost, because I can do that. Now you pull your string through, and leave yourself a good amount on the other side. A good amount, in this case, is like a foot. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start following our pattern. Now I picked a row that's composed of black and white is where I want to start. So right before I enter into my color stuff. Basic tubular peyote. You pick up a bead, you go through a bead. You pick up a bead, you go through a bead. Now which bead do you go through? Well let's pick up a bead and we'll start with a black bead according to the pattern. And what you do is you skip over a bead here, and you go through the second bead in, the, in, in line. So that's that one. So there it is. The line came out of these two. Remember, we threaded back through these two. We went past a bead and through the next one, right? So hopefully they'll eventually line up in kind of a zigzag pattern. It's really hard at the start, though, to get these things to do right. Uh, later on, we'll form a tube, but for now, we're just going to go on around with our pattern. So it's a black and then two whites. So there's our second bead. We're going to skip over a bead and go through a bead. Did we do this right? No, we almost skipped over two beads. We just want to skip through one. 
There it is. And immediately things start going crazy. That's typical for these beads. Or it's typical for me with the beads. Things are crazy. Skip over a bead, go through a bead. Two whites, and then another black. So that's that. Skip over a bead, go through a bead with the black. Now, we're on the last bead. If you count, there's 11 beads that we've added so far. 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. We're on our last bead, the white bead. Now, instead of skipping and going through just one, we're up against a situation. This is, at the end of each row, you actually go through two beads to bring you out ready for your next row. So, the two beads you go through are the one that the string came out of in the first place and the very first bead you laid down. So we can see there's our bead that laid, we laid down. It's stringing back through this bead right here. So that's where we poke through. Go through the black bead. And that is our very first row. Wow, what a work of art. Doesn't that look beautiful? <laughs> It looks like a train wreck. And tubular peyote looks goofy at the start. It always does. Um, one thing you notice, I'm not trying to tighten up anything right here. In fact, I'm kind of leaving it loosey-goosey. We'll go through two or three more rows, and then we'll start to tighten things up. Now, according to my pattern, that was that row. The next row is composed of solid white. So that should be interesting. Now, which bead do we go through? You notice we came out through our first bead. Which bead are we going through with this guy? Well, it's real straightforward. You go through the bead that you went that you put on last time. So we're just going to go through these white and black beads. That's where our next row goes. Pretty straightforward, and it's all white. So this is where I'm most likely to screw up because it's all the same. <laughs> bead number three. And now, we're on our twelfth bead for the second row. We're going to go through the first bead that we've ever laid down. There it is, that black guy, and then the, the guy after it. You know, In the same language that I used, remember I said in the first row, you go through that first bead you laid down, and the one that it went through prior. So we went through our first row, we went through this yellow bead and this black one here. Right? Well now we're going to go through this black one and the very first bead we laid in the second row, which is this white one here. There it is. Now our third pattern, again, it's just like the first one. It's one black and two whites. Now we look at where we're at and another weird thing about tubular peyote is you slowly start to move around um, when you go through you moved up to the next one so we've got to be careful the black one's supposed to be right on top of this black one over here and the whites are supposed to be on top of the original whites so we can see there's a white underneath so we lay down a white Same thing here, it's a white underneath, we're laying down a white. We're basically making a vertical line of black right now with, and white. So there's the black. And then we'll go two whites and a black, two whites and a black, two whites and a black, all the way around. Well, let's put another row on and this will be all white. I'm going to start tightening a, a little bit when I pull, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a yank there. And that'll start tightening things up. Two. Okay, so I almost made a mistake there. Uh, that was supposed to be my last bead, and I was supposed to go through two, and I only went through one. Now, uh, what'll happen when you mess up like this is you'll end up having a string that goes right over a bead like this. And that's how you know you did it wrong. 
of course you're not going to notice you did it wrong for a couple more rows and then you're going to have to undo a whole bunch of your work and you know tears and general sadness result but I happen to catch it so I'm going to thread back through my work and try and get that string back out of there Oop, I did that so now I need to go through two one right there Sometimes I can't get it through two. I'll just go through the one, and then I'll go through the other one, and then try and pull it all tight and not screw anything up. All right, so there it is. That was our fifth row. Now things get interesting. If you remember from our pattern, we only had two white beads on the edge of these blacks and then the, the blacks start to close off the white. And that's where we're at now. We're actually going to do two blacks and a white. So there's our first black. Second black. And a white. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why I keep my hair short. That way I can't pull it out. Luckily I'm bald on top. I don't that manages itself, but I keep my uh, only thing I worry about is I got just long enough hair on my beard I can pull that out. When I get frustrated. Which is a lot with the beads, which is why I do the beads. How about that for irony? I picked a, you know, I've been drawn to beadwork for a number of years. It always intrigued me, just the pattern of it. And then I found out that, you know what, even a clumsy person like me can do this stuff. And it turns out okay. This needle might be too big for the work. I'm starting to get a little bit of tension sometimes. And uh, you can switch down to a smaller one. As long as you can get the string through the freaking needle. That's the big the eye of the needle. Alright, last one for this row. Hey, I got it through too easy. And that's it. Our tube is starting to form up. Well, this row puts us right here. And this is our very first colored bead that's not black or white. Ooh, exciting. we got to do some red. Alright, that's our last one for that row. Can we get it through two? No, we cannot. So, one, two... Time to step up to the next row. The next row according to our pattern. Two reds and a black or red, black, red. So there's the red. And the black. And you can see I'm going through a lot of black. In fact, I'm done with white for quite a while. I could put that away if I wanted to. Alright. That's a kind of a goofy looking one. I don't know if I like that one. So, quality assurance on the bead, I'm looking at it right before I put it in and say, well, do you look okay or not? That's my last check. <laughs> my only check. Alright, we're at the end of our rope. <laughs> Very last bead for this row. Now, normally we would string through two. And you could still do that, but I'm just going to string through the one because I'm going to weave back through my work. So you can see, we're actually on the bead of the previous row. We're not going through this guy right here to continue our next row because we're running really low on our string. So how do we get this taken care of so that it's safe and it doesn't ever come loose or anything? Well, what I do is I follow the line 
So I'm going to go, I'm going to weave back through in the same direction but down instead. So from this blue guy that I come out of, I'm going to go through this black guy here. Right? From this black guy, I'm going to go down through this yellow guy. From this yellow guy, I'm going to go down through this next yellow guy. Alright, so I went down. You can see I'm quite a bit back into my beadwork. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a half hitch through the string that goes down through this black guy here. So I'm going to dig through and find him. There he is, right there. And then you can see that loop that I made by going down, right? That's the string coming out and then going down underneath. And I'm going to go back through it. And that is a half hitch. Snug it up pretty good. Then I'm going to go back through that black guy. Or not back through, but I'm finally going to go through him. Go down one more. Through the orange guy there. Another half hitch. Again, you can see, if you look really close, you can see that string comes out of the bead, goes underneath the street, heading down to that orange guy, and then I just go back through. Now I've done two half hitches, snug it up really tight, make sure I'm okay with everything at this point, because once you cut, there's no going back. I suppose you could leave it out, but I'm not going to, so I'll pull my needle off. There it is. Hey, Mr. Scissors. And I just put some tension on it and cut it. Boom. And that is that. And if you look closely, you can see a little nubby guy right there. Now, if you get things really bad, you can take a lighter and briefly hit it with, hit it up against that and melt it a little bit. But uh, sometimes you don't even need to do that. And at this part, you can kind of roll it around. And this part, you can see it's really firm and it gets looser and looser the closer we get to this edge over here. Because that stress hasn't been taken up. Well, we're going to deal with that next. So we've got the one side tied off now pretty good. Uh, as promised, we're going to go ahead and pull these starter beads off. And it's real straightforward. You just uh, pull them off one at a time. So let's go ahead and add a row to this, and you can see, uh, according to our pattern, we're going to start closing back out. So that's two blacks and a white. And first one's going to be a black. And we could do one more. Well, if we do that, we're going to start up on the very bottom part of our finished piece, which we finished with red and black. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so instead of going through two, we're going to tie it off again so just go through the one ah. yeah you get really short comes off the needle real easy so really probably should have stopped at the end of the last row because here I am threading up again but. that. So again, on the when we go to tie off, we don't do, uh, we don't come out the second one to start another row. We just go through the first bead at the end. Then we come down a couple, right? Farther, and the next one up, two, one more, three, and then half hitch. So we got to dig underneath for the one that's going from this white bead we're coming out of into the next one up, which is the black. Okay, there it is. We just grabbed the one. We don't want to grab both of them. That's no good. Half hitch through that black bead. Through the white bead. Half hitch, stringing underneath. Thread back through. That's our second half hitch. 
All right, it all looks good. Let's go ahead and tie that off. Time for the second piece. Now, I'm going to go ahead and finish off, and then we'll do this part down here, all the way up, and then we're going to start in to, well, we'll just see how far we get. We're pretty much going to take the next piece and finish the whole thing off. Well, you can see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten beads with one piece of string six foot long on this on this one. Not bad. So I think I'll do another uh, six foot piece. It was very important when we uh, finished out that we finished on the last bead. You don't want to stop in the middle of the row if at all possible. I mean, theoretically you can. But then you got to figure out where you start up and everything, and that uh, leaves us in an awkward spot. You got to remember where you're at and stuff like that. So always try and finish on a row when you tie off. Finish the row and tie it off. Don't finish in the middle if you can avoid it. So it's time to start up again. So we're going to learn to tie a piece on now. So here's our string. Got her threaded up. And when you look at this thing, what's important is you go through one of the top beads. That's, you should go through that first. It doesn't matter which one, right? Because we finished off, we finished out a row, so we can start up any place. So I'll just pick that one. So we'll finish up there. And then we go down and, and kind of, uh, you can see I went through two already. We're going to just follow this down three or four and do our first half hitch. There we go. So it's kind of like the way we were finishing off. The, the way we start up is similar to the way we finish off. Now, you're going to lose whatever you do here. So try and keep it not too long to tie on. So we got our four pieces done. And, uh, you know, when we were tying off, we were going this way. When we were finishing off our thread, starting up our thread, we're going the opposite way, back this way. But it's still the same principle. You dig through and you find that uh, guy that's heading down to the next bead, which is that guy right there. Do a half hitch. Oops, lost my needle. And you can, what's cool is you can just grab them and kind of snug them up just like that. Kind of thread it back up. All right, and the guy that we just tied around, we'll go back through his bead. Go through one more. There it is. And we'll do our half hitch again. All right, and we'll check it out and make sure that it's okay. And the very last black bead for this row. Okay, on this end, and this is going to be the end that hangs up to the top. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make my, uh, make this part in here. We've got the bead that we're going to go through. And then we're going to put three more beads on, like this. And then the final bead, the terminal bead, like that. So we got those strung through. Now, I'm going to try and 
show you what it looks like here. So there they are, there's the five beads. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back around through these three beads right here. Just like this. And what that does is it causes a, that bead on the end, you can see it's kind of sitting different from the other guys because we're forcing it to go back through. So three beads and then there's that fourth bead. Now we got our fifth bead. So that final bead, the fifth bead, the one that we started going through, we're going to go back through the same direction, move in the same direction as the thread we went through in the first time. So if we didn't have all these other guys, we'd be looping around this guy. So you can see, it's kind of funky looking, but that's what it looks like. It's just a little doobagee. I'm going to dive down one. Make sure this whole thing is as tight as we can get it. Okay, dive back up. And we're ready for our next guys. And that's one of the connectors right there. We gotta do six total, so we got five more to go. Okay, finally, we got it right. Only a couple mistakes, but we've got that bead every other one so we've only got six now instead of the twelve we work down to six and we got three beads and we got this guy at the end okay last of the red one black and two reds that's what we're doing and we finish it all off with a bunch of black one more one more row of black and we are fini on the tubular portion, this big part, the main body. And that's the very last for that row. And again, I'm not going to come back out at the top. I'm going to start working back through my beadwork because I'm going to tie this off and cut it. So yes, gentle viewers, I use too much string. <laughs> Got a little too exuberant. Okay, I got my uh, ring tied onto the end, and I didn't do any footage of it because I tried about three or four false starts, and then I just kept playing with it until I got it. Something that, when I say got it, means I got something going on that didn't look like total poo-poo, you know, and it got the job done. And uh, essentially what I did was I took the six pieces, remember we had the six little fringe guys that came out here, I just tied around and around here through those beads and then I did uh, I picked two opposite beads so you got six so I did one and then counted around the other side and what I did is I strung on four beads went through these three beads came around this top fourth bead back down through the three down through these other four and around and then back through and uh, tied it all off uh, well, I did a little bit more than that too because I also like kind of came back up and then I finally tied on this top class with a few times around. Um, the string got really tight going through there. I had to actually move down in my needle to get this done. Uh, it's, it's a bit unbalanced. At least I got two. But it's functional. This is not going to give. This is going to hang in there and mostly not draw attention to itself. The best I hope for on class is that it doesn't look like total awfulness. Uh, I'm just not skilled enough with these clumsy hands to do something that's good looking. And uh, I try to stay away from this section. So I got past this. I got something that worked. And I'm not going to back up and do it again to show you guys. Because you know what? I probably couldn't get it right a second time. This stuff I get a lot more picky on with the patterns and choices of colors and stuff like that because uh, I can control that and do something about it but these top things I just don't know what to do so you have to look someplace else to figure out how that stuff gets done good because I ain't it see now look look at that guy right there I came down through came out here went through three at the end not just one came back up came down came down here went through three came back came down, went through three, and then came all the way back up. 
So that's that's kind of the pattern. Uh, and there's no. This is where it's like I'm gonna do something here, but you could, you know, this you have to do this tubular peyote a certain way. It's one way only, right? This. One thing I will argue is on these fringes is that you could do them differently. You could do each one differently, but you'll get a better effect if you do the same thing over and over for every single fringe, in my mind. That's what I'm going to do. Now, obviously your mind can go wild. You can say, well, I could move these beads where they'd be down in the next one up, and I could get kind of a, a pattern that way. But the, the whole point about these things is that your mind is connecting together across them so you don't want to get too crazy and uh, but you can get as elaborate as you want to one thing I will n note is that for this piece right here because it's going to hang I want the fringe to be way longer than this piece right here so about this length and half again as long so that is nice that's hanging down off of there quite a long ways. And we're going to have 12 of these things. So 12 times 50, <coughs> even if it was a straight single shot like this, that's 600 beads in this piece. This is 24 around by 20, something like that. You know, that's 480 beads. So there's going to be more beads in the tail than there is in the body. So I tried a few different designs. Um, my mind seemed to keep coming back to this bifurcated tail would be the only feature as far as, you know, branches and stuff like that. Uh, they're pretty close. This one has no color on the tail at all here. And I, I kind of like that. And it would draw the eye back to this. And then I have this and maybe even a few more blacks up here. And if you can imagine this one over and over, 12 of them hanging down off of that, I'd like it more. I think this has too much color here. This has a good amount of color. The main difference here is that I, I put in a piece of black in between each one to break it up some. A black, a white, and a black. And then we're going to go back up through. We're going to go all the way up too, but not including that, that black there. So those 11 that we strung on, we're going to go back up through those. All right. Now at this point, I should really be, before I get too far into this and it gets too hard, I need to string this all up. So I'm going to pull the whole thread through. So let's get the other part of this tail because we're doing a split tail, so that's 11. That's our 11. And then we're going to finish it off with the black, white, black for the bottom. So now we're going to go around our 3 and back up through our 11. And we'll pull that tight. First one's the worst one. Okay, so that's really our, our tail is on there, our fringe is on there. Now we got to thread back all the way up through these beads and through this guy right here. So this is the part where people that know what they're doing look good and I end up looking like. Okay, so I came back out through that. I'm going to go through the next bead. Now we'll pull all the string through. No, I'm trying not to hook up on anything. And there we go. And that is the very first one. So you can see this thing, these things use up a lot of string because whatever it is, it's the string goes through every bead twice. Except for that bead on the end there. Those two beads it only goes through once. Everything else it's twice. So it uses up a lot of string on each each one. We're down to the last last uh, fringe, 
and uh, my string is almost dead too. I got, I got so lucky. I was like, man, is it long enough or not? It looks like it's going to be just barely long enough to go through and tie the thing off. Uh, while I'm doing this last one, though, I thought I'd have a conversation about mistakes because we're getting here towards the end, and we're going to call it done. And I was like, well, you know. There's always this thing about mistakes. One, two, three. And there's all kinds of different mistakes, like not having a long enough thread and tying it off badly or making execution type mistakes. Um, one of the things that is a mistake on this is that I wanted these guys to be of equal length. But the way I was doing it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, that one's good. But some of these, it's 11 on one side and 10 on the other little tail. Uh, everything else seemed to work out okay. But it could also be that up here at the top, some of them are 12 and some of them are 11. Might even be some 13s. That's a mistake in that it's not what you wanted to get done, but it's not one I would sit there and go, oh my god, the piece is ruined, and I would whip out my scissors and cut the whole damn thing out. Oh, see? See? I'm sitting here talking to you guys about mistakes, and I'm making a ton of them, so I'm going to shut up and finish this. Look at that. See, that was almost another one. I almost made two mistakes. I've made more mistakes on this thing talking about mistakes. Maybe it was a mistake to talk about mistakes while I'm trying to get this right. Because it's keeping away from my con concentration. So you got the pattern you tried to make, and then there's the variation of all the little things. String length, bead size, how tight did you weave it, blah, blah, blah. And that all happens. And uh, you know what? It's... It's part of making beads. It's the hardest thing I have. Uh, you have to understand that that all of my training and everything in, in my life, my education has all been really about math and things like that. And it's about perfection. In mathematics, you can get it perfect. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, 4 divided by 2 is exactly 2. It's not a little bit more. It's not a little bit less. But if you were to take a board that was four foot long and tried to cut it in half and get two exactly the same pieces, they're never exactly the same. That's the real world and that's the big difference. So that perfection streak in all my training, whether it's uh, mathematics or computer programming or anything like that, it doesn't happen here. So you got to look at these things and go, you know what, that's the way that it is. It does not come out exactly, exactly. And for you to strive to get it that exact, you might actually be making a mistake, trying to be too perfect. That's a tough one. I mean, look at this piece right here. I really like it. It turned out great, except <laughs> it does have one obvious error in it to me. You see this on the top, this piece here? Look at that. You see that right there? I put on, I actually threaded on a wrong bead. It's one of the few times I've done that. But, yeah, that bead right there should be red, not black. Now, I know that it's there. Now, you know that it's there. But think of beforehand. You would have never spotted that. You're like, oh, look at all of this. Da, da, da. It's nice. And then you go like, you know, I was only looking at it really, really close, and I noticed that mistake there. And then I go, you know what? That's a good thing for me. That's a good mistake. Okay? That was an honest mistake. Uh... It doesn't draw too bad from the rest of the piece. I mean, I only happen to catch it because I'm like following this line across and following it across. But what I've decided not to do is I'm not going to cut it up and go and fix that bead. I'm going to leave it there. Ah, oh, you know, humility. <laughs> you can never have enough of it. <laughs> but the other part is that it shows us, like, you know what, this is... This is a human construction. And there's other little things, right? I can go on and on about what I do and don't like about this. But I tell you what, there's a heck of a lot more that I like than what I don't like. Um, one thing I will note on both of these guys, these bottom fringes, 
I did kind of the minimum size you could do, which is a three. And that pretty much covers up the string. You don't really see too much string. If you just do one, you could theoretically, the, mo the minimum you could do is have one bead on the end, but you will see a lot of string on either side of that bottom bead. If you go with two or three or whatever, I think two would be, you know, the more you go with, but then it starts getting loopy and I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff you can do, but this is the basic idea is that you've got a body and the fringe and then you got the tie off up top. Somehow you got to do that. So what are some of the other things that I do and don't like about this? Well, this is a, if you look, the body of it is a multiple of, there's four things, right? So if I count these white circle patches here, there's four of them all the way around it till I get to the other side. You know, and there's four of these stripes and four and four and four until I get to the top. And the way I did this, there's actually six wires coming in. So I actually switched from a four pattern all the way through this thing to a six pattern at the very top. And then when I get done with that six, instead of going to three, I go down to two, and finally down to one. So, this six in here does not fit with the rest of the piece. I should have done a four. I had four tie-offs, you know, like at the top of each one of these, and, and worked it out that way. And you could weave through and have just four places, you know. But I chose six, because on the last piece... I did six, and I get real caught up with sixes when it comes to tubular peyote. Six is a natural number, but if you look, these little white cross type things here, there's six of those. This is actually a, a six pattern all the way around, okay? And then, so that naturally, uh, having six uh, tie-offs up top, that works out good and blah, 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 all the way through. Well, I'm still finding mistakes here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I'm like, okay, I'm average. I think my strengths are not on execution. <laughs> I, I, I can get stuff sewn together and it doesn't fall apart. That's about all I can say for my execution. Uh, I think my strengths are on the design. I think I make some designs that are like, hey, wow, that looks cool, you know? But uh, you go like, that's too bad you can't put it together worth a shit, but it looks cool. <laughs> My most popular piece that I've done far and away has been this lighter. People really liked it, uh, or at least they watch it a lot on YouTube. And uh, I like it too. I really like this texture, or this uh, pattern. Uh, I liked it so much that, uh, you know, on the end of the stick... I did that same pattern there. A little bit different, but uh, kind of a similar thing. Again, this is a tubular peyote, but uh, I really like it. Um, I'm still learning, right? But I thought, well, if you like the pattern there, maybe you'd like to do something here. And I made kind of the simplest version that I could of this. Again, the six you know, three primary and three secondary colors. That's the smallest you could make this. And I did it with big beads so it's a little more obvious. Uh, so that's a way to put this together. Tubular peyote. These fringes. Kind of a fringe work up top that you join together to get to, down to a single piece and a metal ring up top of some type to uh, attach it to other things or hang it up or what have you. All right. Hope you like it. I hope you make something cool too. Uh, doesn't have to be exactly like this. I hope you make something of your own that looks like this. Send me a video or a link. Comments are welcome. Uh, any advice is always appreciated. <laughs> and uh, uh, thanks for watching. Salute.